But this, yeah, this has taken me lots of places. I was lecturing at Pinaferina to their designers oh, yeah. last year, yeah. Who would have designed the majority of Ferraris? Yeah, and the, and the uh, Camargue. Oh, of course, yeah, the yeah. Camargue, famously. That's right. But, uh, There's so I, many stories about Pinot Yeah. Coming up. And so the Camargue, that was built with yeah, you. I, I saw the last, de literally, days of the Camargue at Hyde Road because it was taken back, I think, to Crewe. Uh, it was built at Mullen Park Ward, then about 77 when I came on the shop floor. It was around then. It, it, it you ceased to be. the early ones that were they, yeah, they, they, yeah, they were there. I don't know why, but it was taken away from Mullen Park Ward then. And so I, did, I saw but yeah. we, I never got to work on that. And then, so what would have been the matchup between Crew and Mulliner Park Ward? Were you quite separate? Was there much uh, crossover there, between the Yeah, two? yeah. Well, so we, when, once we made our bodies, yeah. they went off to Crew on a big lorry, about six of them at a time, and they came back in primer and with all the mechanical working, and then we further coach built them. You know, so, okay. so painting, trimming, uh, and final electrics and things, and uh, uh, and obviously final inspection and delivery to the around the world to the dealers. And would there be much movement of personnel? Between? No, no. Maybe maybe at some managerial level, but in terms of skills, crew, we we were, apart from the, the Newport Pagnall lot, we were London people. You know, we <laughs> <laughs> just, we stayed in London. You know, yeah. uh, when when it started. Uh, uh, when the end was there, uh, there were a few people that went on uh, to, um, uh, to to crew, you know, like uh, to work there. But it wasn't it wasn't a normal thing for you to go back and support crew. You know? Yeah, yeah. And what cars are there? Any specific cars that kind of stand out in your mind in regard to specification or what was the most difficult car you had to work on? The most. Um. They were pretty formulaic, to be honest with you. Some of the Royal cars had a few details in them. Um, the Phantom 6s that had the uh, optional rear um, lights. Is a big fan of He seems to use mm -hmm. the Phantom yeah. most of the time now for well, official occasions. Well, the rear, the rear lights, there was, a, there was a nice job that apprentices used to do, and it looked like you were making a brass boat. But when you turn it round, it was the insert that got chromed for the, yeah. the optional rear lights on there. That was yeah. that's quite a tricky job, but that was. But we enjoyed that actually. Yeah. Yeah. Working with the brass. And then when you saw your work out on the streets, if you were in London in Mayfair, you'd see a Corniche or a Phantom. Yeah. <laughs> well, you would be, yeah, and you boast your fan. Look at that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's quite a nice feeling. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty high standard. And now when. Subsequently, you've come to drive them and work on them. Yep. It, when you start taking them apart, does it bring back memories? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I can see that there's a, there's a particular Bentley uh, that I do a bit of work on, and I've even had uh, an ex mile and a park wall trimmer do the headlining for me, because I know so that like he, he, he knows how fussy I am about the list lines yeah. you know, on, on there. But yeah, we get to see... I think when you when you strip things back, uh, I mean, going back a lot further, I, uh, there was a Bentley R-Type Continental that I did a lot of work on. That was we stripped back, and it would hit. It'd been on a rally. It hit a wolf in Iran and damaged it. Been hit okay. at the back. Wow. But when I looked at the front wings, I could still see file marks on the front wings from the original makers that made them in Chiswick, including Arthur Noyes that I worked under. But yeah. you know, you know, leagues ago for him. And I remember thinking, they left file marks on there. And that was built up with a sort of primer, not a two-pack primer, but a sort of primer surfacer. And obviously, they were on piecework. What does so, that mean? Uh, so you get paid for how many jobs you do. <laughs> so a few file marks here and there, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it, it give, the way. painters to sort that out, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so they, they earn good money, but they work very, very hard. And when was the first time you actually got to drive something in Rolls-Royce? Uh, for me, I suppose as a final inspector, I got got to go out sometimes with the cars. You know, we'd hear wind noises, creaking leather that we'd put lanolin or yeah. hide food on. Um, we, there was a thing called a monsoon that we used to put them under it within the factory, uh, and that would often involve uh, oh, you test them for yeah, the, leaks? The, the, the leaks on there. And quite often on my on my sheet, I put screw from crew, and it, what it would be it would be a screw that of one of the fixtures during the engine or the wiring. That hadn't been sealed, you know, so it'd be just a little drip through a screw. There were all these, it's all, as I'm talking to you, it's just coming back, you know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the monsoon, you'd sit there, basically in, in the rain, looking, you know, yeah. 
listening and looking. How long know. would it take to check the car? Mm, it depends at what stage, really. I suppose. Well, you were checking them at different stages. Yeah, because I'll get called down. If, I, if there weren't many cars in the final dispatch, this, you know, my, my manager said, right, just do, do a random audit of the woodwork. Right. And it was all wrapped up in paper, you know, all polished woodwork yeah, with yeah. polyester. But I'd go down there, and I knew the boys, and I'd say, right, I need a few sets, lads. And they'd give me, and, and I, you know, from time to time, I would find little inserts, little powdery inserts and things, and, and they'd do them as a matter of course. But I know when they'd see me, they'd think, oh, God. I was going to say, you must yeah. have been, did you become unpopular, or they accepted it? You must have been sending things back. Oh, yeah. It was, it was my job, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Or I'd have to go and look at a, you know, a, a batch of hides from Connolly and, I'd, and I would reject some of them. They might have warble fly or scar tissue or too much loose face. Yeah. Uh, and I'd send them back. And that kept Connolly on their toes as well. You know? Yes. I, I was just, it, it, if you kicked off at me, you weren't really getting why I was there. Yeah, you know? yeah. There, exactly. were one, there were one or two people that didn't like my face and it doesn't matter. Really, yeah. yeah, but that's probably because they were not doing... Yeah, works, yeah, know, yeah. Because I presume the majority of people would have been almost slightly embarrassed that they... This youngster. More that their work wasn't right at that level. Oh, right. Well, it, when it comes to the final, <laughs> final inspection, it would take me, I think I'd have got about 45 minutes, and I'll produce uh, a list that I put on the screen, and then they'd bring around an electrician or this or that. And it wasn't necessarily their work, but they had to work on it. But, but woe betide me if I put near side instead of offside. They go, we've done it. I say, but this, that's the offside. And they would, they would, it was a big sort of play between us, you know. Yeah, on, yeah. Well, I had to, I had to become a pedant. Otherwise, what's this? Well, we don't know what that is, you know. And they, yeah, 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 sure. they go off, uh, yeah, thinking they got one over on you.